Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to define what a client for group is and we are going to verify that a given group is a client for group or a given set has a client for group structure. So a client for group to be, um, you know, just, just to give a small overview of that, this contains four elements, right? And one of those elements is going to be an identity element and the other three elements are going to be non-identity elements. The non-identity elements are closed within themselves, right? Closed within themselves. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that, let's say, you know, uh, the example is there, A is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7. So if you multiply 3 by 5, right, the answer is going to be 7. If you multiply, on the other hand, uh, 5 with 7, right, you'll get 3, and so on. Now, let's get down to the definition of a client for group, and then we'll, uh, we'll prove that, the, we'll, we'll verify that the given set is a client for group with the appropriate multiplication. Okay, now, having said that, let's define what a client for group is. A client for group, Line for group is a group, okay, which has which has an identity element, right? An identity element and and the three non-identity non-identity elements elements are closed are closed under the closed under under the group operation group operation okay so in order to give a little overview of a little more description on this client for group Let's assume that A and B and C are the non-identity elements and E being the identity element. And we shall assume that the operation is star, right? Okay, now what we'll do is that we'll draw this Kelly table in which we will look at the uh, operation of each element with everyone else and every element because you know, we need to check whether, um, you know, it's commutative or not and so on. So basically, E times E is E, right? A times A is E, B times B is E, oops, B times B is E, C times C is E. A star B is A, E star B is B, E star C is C, A star E is A, a star B is C, A star C is B, right? So as we mentioned that the non-identity elements are closed. So if you take, for example, B star A, it will be give us C, it will be giving us C. And B star E is B. And since the operation is closed under the group, uh, you know, like the non-empty elements are closed under the group operation. So B star C, at the end of the third row is going to be A. C star E in the first column, th last row is going to be C. C star A is B and C star B is A. So this is the Kelly table, corresponding Kelly table for our, for our Kelly for, uh, for client for group. Okay, now let's look into our example and let's verify the client for group structure. So A is given as 1, 3, 5, 7. And the operation that we are going to define on this is as follows. The operation star, right? So any element A star B is going to be the product AB. And this is going to be divided by 8 and the remainder is going to be recorded. So this is the operation that is defined. So for example, let's take 3 star 7 right so 3 star 7 is 3 multiplied by 7 modulo modulo 8 right okay 
3 multiplied by 7 is 21 modulo 8. Now, how do we find 21 modulo 8? We'll just write 21 as 2 multiplied by 8 plus 5 modulo 8. And we see that the remainder is 5. So, this is going to be equal to 5. The other way of doing it is by division, by long division. We divide 21 by 8, right? And we get 2 over here to give 16. And the remainder is going to be 5. So, this 5 is going to be 21 modulo 8. Now, let's uh, let, let's get down to work, right? Okay. Now, the ident so the closure property, let's find out uh, the Kelly table of this and let's verify the closure property. So, star is the operation here. Um, actually, it's, it's a good habit to write 8 below this star, right? So, star 8, let's say this is the operation. And we have got 1, we have got 3, we have got 5, we have got 7, right? Okay, now we have got a 1 over here, we have got a 3 over here, we have got a 5 over here, and we have got a 7 over here. So 1 star 1, right? So 1 multiplied 1 is 1, modulo 8, that is 1, right? 1 multiplied by 3, that is 3, 3 divided by 8 gives the remainder 3. 1 multiplied 5 is 5, that divided by 8 gives the remainder 5. 1 multiplied by 7 is 7, divided by 8, the remainder is 7. 3 multiplied 1 is 3, divided by 8, that gives the remainder 3. 3 multiplied 3, the second row, second column, right? So that is 9, divided by 8 will give us a remainder 1. 3 multiplied 5 is 15, divided by 8, uh, that's, uh, you know, the, the quotient is going to be 1, and the remainder is going to be 7. 3 multiplied by 7, as we had seen a little while back, is 21. And that divided by 8 will give us a remainder of 5, right? And then 5 multiplied 1 is 5. That divided by 8 is going to give the remainder 5 itself. Uh, 5 multiplied by 3, we have done this a little while back. That is 15. 15 divided by 8, the quotient is 1. The remainder is 7. 5 multiplied 5 is 25. 25 divided by 8, the quotient is 3. The remainder is 1, right? Okay. Now, 5 multiplied 7 is 35. 35 divided by 8, right? So, the remainder is 3. I'll just show it once here on the right side. So, 35 divided by 8. So, 4 is the quotient. We get 32 and the remainder is 3. So, 3 is the operation result over here. 7 multiplied 1 is 7. So, it's less than 8. So, that is the remainder. 3 multiplied 7 is 21. Again, 21 divided by 8. The remainder is 5. 3 multiplied, sorry, 7 multiplied by 5 is 35. As you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, the remainder is 3. 7 multiplied 7 is 49. And 49 divided by 8, the remainder is going to be 1, right? Okay, so this is the Kelly table that we have created. And as you can see that um, all the elements, the square of all the elements is 1, right? The square of all elements is 1. 1, 1, 5 squared is 1. 7 squared is 1. Okay. Now, if we multiply um, any two elements, so let's say 5 and 3, right? So 5 and 3, the third column and the second row, we get 7. Again, let's take another example. So 7 is the uh, third, 7 is the last row, 7 multiplied by, uh, let's say, 3, that is the second column, we shall get 5. Right, so uh, the the so, so investigating this particular Kelly table. So investigating, investigating the Kelly table, C A Y L E Y Kelly table. We verify that A is a Klein four group. And that, my friend, ends the proof of this particular problem. Thank you so much for watching.